Well, good evening, everybody. So tonight I wanna to show you how to go through the firmware update process for the NHX-10 hybrid inverter. So let's get started. So the NHX hybrid inverter has two different components that have firmware that can be updated. Uh, the display has its own firmware, and then the inverter components itself has another set of firmware. In order to update the display, you need a, I want to say the recommendation is a 4 to 8 gig either a thumb drive, SD card, micro SD card with a USB adapter, and it needs to be a class four, basically a high, higher quality storage device. And then the inverter itself, you need a Windows computer or a Mac running a Windows operating system, I would imagine would work as well. And then a USB-C cable because the port to connect to the inverter is a USB-C port. So we're gonna start off with the display firmware. I'm going to show you why you need to have a higher quality storage device <laughs> because my first few attempts, I did not have a higher quality storage device. And after I got the firmware all loaded up, here's what my display actually looked like. The entire process looked like it went through fine. I could not understand any of the text labels throughout any of the pages on the inverter. It was only by, I, I tried factory resetting, I tried a whole bunch of different stuff, and it didn't work. And ultimately, once I got to a higher quality storage device that I used to update the firmware, that's when it actually wrote properly. So there was some kind of a corruption there. So if you end up going through the firmware process and you end up seeing you know, what I just showed you, you need to get a better storage device for the update. So I have a PNY Optima 4 gig thumb drive from years ago. So we'll plug that into the computer. So Ian told me that the firmware is going to be loaded onto the Watts 24 seven website at this current time. It's not, but when I get those links, I'll make sure to put them down in the description below. So there's two different firmware files for the two different types of firmware we're going to be updating. We've got the LCD upgrading zip file, which you'll unzip that. And I've got a couple copies here. So we've got the new that we'll be working with. And then this ease use boot is the thumb drive that we're gonna be using. Inside the zip file, there's some information. They would like a class four storage device from four to eight gigs. They don't recommend more than 16 because the inverter doesn't like to read it. It needs to be a FAT32 and a distribution unit size of 4096 bytes. So what we're going to do, we're going to format the drive in their specifications that they want. Right click and format. Make sure that the file system is set to FAT32, the allocation unit size, 4096, and we'll check quick format. And when you're ready to format it, hit start. It's going to warn you that it's going to erase everything and then it, with a quick format it should be done in a matter of a few seconds. Format complete. We'll close this window out and we will reopen our thumb drive. Now what the inverter wants for the display is this XRD underscore TFT folder. We're going to copy this and paste this onto our thumb drive. And once those files are done copying, we're gonna close out that window and we're gonna right click and eject the thumb drive safely. And then we can pull the drive out and head over to the inverter. So before you go and actually plug in the thumb drive into the inverter, you should probably do a couple of things. You should go through and turn off your PV disconnect, turn off the RSD switch, turn off your AC output and your grid input. 
That way your inverter is solely running on battery power. You're not gonna have any accidental unknown power losses when you're updating your firmware. Now your inverter should be fine and shouldn't restart when you're doing your display firmware, but when you go to do the actual inverter firmware later, it will restart. So you might as well get it all prepped and ready to go with the first firmware update that you're gonna do. So I'll turn off my AC output, turn off the PV switch, and press the RSD button. Power might go out on the display for a second and then come back, and then it's in battery mode only. And I already had my grid input turned off. So you're gonna end up taking the faceplate off the bottom here, and where you need to plug in the thumb drive is all the way over to the right, that USB port right over there. So find your two big relays and it's just to the right of the two big relays. So you'll take your thumb drive, you'll plug it in, and as soon as you plug it in, then your display is going to go blue. You might hear a beep, and then you'll start seeing images loading across the screen of the inverter. If your screen goes black, it beeps and then it comes back to your regular inverter screen. There's something about the thumb drive that the inverter does not like. So you can try again or find a different thumb drive. And the last step of the firmware update process for the display is actually a calibration of the screen, which is awesome. So there'll be five touch points that you need to press. So you'll press the cross here, top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left, and center. Calibration is complete, and then it should reload the main display of the inverter. And then once the update's done, don't forget to unplug your thumb drive. You don't want the inverter rebooting and then starting an update again on the display firmware when you're not expecting it. Don't ask me how I know that. So we've got the display firmware updated, and now we're going to switch gears and do the actual inverter firmware. And that's going to require downloading some files from the Watts 24-7 website or getting them from Ian. And we're going to plug our Windows computer into a USB-C port down on the opposite side of the circuit board in the wiring compartment. And then we're going to run a program to push two updates up to the inverter. So I've got my laptop on a chair down here, right by the inverter. I'm going to take my USB-A to USB-C cable, plug in the USB-A side into the laptop, and we'll take the USB-C side, and this USB-C port is right here to the left of these network jacks. And so we're going to plug that right in there. And so for the firmware update for the inverter, we're going to want to go into this ARM and DSP upgrading zip folder. We're going to want to unzip that. You can right click and extract all. It creates a new folder. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to run this setup.exe file to install a program to push the changes up to the inverter. And then that will install a shortcut on your desktop. You'll run that shortcut. Make sure you're on the proper COM port, which I only have COM3. You're going to want to import. You may have to navigate to the folder that you were working out of from the ARM and DSP upgrading folder, but you need to select the AXF file first, hit open, and then upgrade. And you see progress going. You may hear a few clicks on your inverter during right at the beginning but it'll push those cha that change. Your inverter will click some more, probably reboot. I guess not. And you can see here, there was zero transfer errors, zero image faults in this upgrade. So then the next thing you wanna do is import the output file and hit open and then run the upgrade. And it starts pushing those changes up 
to the inverter. 100% complete. So you can go and unplug your cables, put your computer away, and then what I like to do after updating the firmware on any device, if it doesn't do it on its own, which I can't remember if this did it on its own before, but I like to do a full system shutdown and reboot to make sure that it starts fresh on the new firmware. So I'll turn off my battery breaker, the display will go off, pre-charge the capacitors in the inverter first, display comes back on, and then I can turn on my battery connection. And then to verify the firmware version, go into settings, OK, the paper icon, and then you can see what your current arm, your current display, and HMI versions are. And then you can go through and power everything back up like normal. So it's a fairly straightforward process. Make sure your thumb drive, you've got a proper thumb drive and it makes sure it's formatted properly. Put the folder on the thumb drive and plug it in. That will auto update the display. And then you need to plug in your laptop into that USB-C port, run that hybrid program to push up the AXF and the output files to the inverter. And then I would recommend doing a full system reboot at the very end just to make sure that everything is clean and fresh on the new firmware. And just to remind you, if you do end up updating the display firmware and you see garbled characters for all the text labels, that usually means that you need a better quality thumb drive. If you try to run the update and the screen goes out and then comes back to the main display or the screen goes black and just stays black, usually that means there's some kind of a communication problem with the thumb drive. Either it's too big or it just can't read anything off of the drive. So try a new drive or unplug it and plug it back in. Try again. If the update program locks up before the update actually starts pushing information to the inverters, it'll close on you, just reopen it and start pushing the files again. But hopefully that helps. Uh, hopefully I went over any of the little gotchas that might occur, but fairly straightforward process. So with that, I'm going to let y'all go. Y'all stay safe, stay cool, and we'll catch up with you later.